Let's see here, auto address starting at 0000. zero, zero, zero. We want to enter FC, BC, and 0, F, 26, E, A. Okay, let me stop for a minute. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This of course is the Heathkit Microcomputer Learning System Model ET3400. And I'm just finishing up here on entering in a program using this hexadecimal keypad here, and it's a bear. It really gives you an appreciation of higher level programming languages, but you get a lot of good insight into what's going on at the circuit level. Remember, down on the circuit level with these chips, we're manipulating ones and zeros. This is a hexadecimal keypad, and this is for human benefit that makes it easier to enter in a program. Can you imagine having to keep track of ones and zeros if you had to enter in a program in binary? So this hexadecimal keypad allows us to enter in our program in a more compact form instead of ones and zeros in hexadecimal. And behind these keys are some circuitry and that's also associated with a program or a subroutine in the ROM that keeps looks at each one of these keys and when you go to press it, it generates the binary code associated with that, with that key. The letter F, for instance, would be four ones. But let's take a quick look at this program. We'll run it real quick before we get into the octal and hexadecimal number systems. So it's stored at address 0000. zero, zero, zero. So we say do 0000. Zero, zero, zero. And you can see here this particular program is lighting up each of the individual segments. There's eight segments on these eight segment LED displays. The eighth segment is including this dot here. So there are six displays and it's lighting up each of the individual segments before moving on to the next and then it's repeating. But let's get on to the octal and hexadecimal number systems. Starting with the octal number system, the main difference is the octal number system has a base of eight, meaning there are eight possible digits. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And similar to the binary and decimal number system, the octal number system is a weighted system, meaning the position of each digit with respect to the octal point will be weighted. So if this is the octal point and we go to the right, this will be 8 to the 0, 8 to the 1, 8 to the 2, 8 to the 3, and 8 to the 4, and so on for the weights. Going to the right of the octal point, this will be weighted 8 to the minus 1, the next position over 8 to the minus 2, and then 8 to the minus 3, and so on. So with that information, the octal number can be converted to its decimal equivalent simply by multiplying each octal digit by its positional weight. If we want to convert the octal number 423 to decimal, we would multiply 4 times the positional weight, which is 8 to the power of 2. Add that to 2 times 8 to the power of 1 plus 3 times 8 to the power of 0. And this would be 4 times 64 plus 2 times 8 
plus 3 times 1. So we would have 256 plus 16 plus 3 and that equals 275 decimal. So 423 octal is equal to 275 decimal. And if we had an octal number with a digit to the right of the octal point, this would be 1 times 8 to the power of 1 plus 6 times 8 to 0 plus 7 times 8 to the minus 1 and we would have 8 plus 6 plus 7 over 8 7 eighths and this equals 14.875 decimal. So we know how to convert an octal number to its decimal equivalent. In this case we have 423 octal is equal to 275 decimal. But how do we go from a decimal number and convert it into its octal equivalent? Well similar to binary where we are repeatedly divided by 2. In this case, the base is 8, so we repeatedly divide by 8, recording the remainders, and the remainders will make up the equivalent octal number. So we have 275 decimal divided by 8, and that goes into that 34 plus we have a remainder of 3 and then we have the 34 bring that down 34 divided by 8 which is equal to we have 4 which gives us 32 plus the remainder of 2 and then we have the 4 divided by 8 which goes 0 plus the remainder of 4 and here the last remainder the 4 is the most significant digit and the first remainder is the least significant digit so this comes down, this is equal to 4, 2, 3, octal. So this verifies that 275 decimal is equal to 423 octal. If we want to convert a decimal fraction into octal, we repeatedly multiply this number by 8 and we keep track of the carries into the integer position. So we would have 0.38 times 8, which is equal to 3.04, which is equal to 0 0.04 plus the carry of 3 and then we go ahead and we multiply 0 0.04 times 8 which is equal to 0 0.32 plus a carry of 0 and then we take 0.32 multiply that by 8 that equals 2.32 56 which is equal to 0 0.56 plus the carry of 2 and in this case the first carry is the most significant digit so this would be 
302 octal, so 0.38 decimal is equal to 0.302 octal. The advantage of the octal number system is that it makes it easy to convert from octal to binary. So if you had a large decimal number that you needed to convert to binary, you would convert it first to octal and then from octal to binary. So in the octal number system, we have eight possible digits or symbols, zero through seven, and the equivalent binary uh, to count from zero to seven, we need three bit binary number. So if we individually represent these in binary, zero of course would be zero, zero, zero. One is zero, zero, one. Two, zero, one, zero. Three, zero, one, one. Four is one, zero, zero. Five, one, zero, one. Six, one, one, zero. And seven, one, one, one. So if we had an octal number, we've used in the past, we'll use this uh, 4, 2, 3 octal. To convert that to binary, we would just convert each of these digits individually, making sure that we have three bits to represent each. So if we need to add any zeros, for instance, this is 3, this is 0, 1, 1, this is 2, which is 0, 1, 0, and 4, which is 1, 0, 0, and that's binary. So this is the equivalent binary of the octal number 423. And you can see here if we take this binary number now and convert it back to decimal, we end up with 275 decimal, which we already determined was equivalent to 423 in octal. So the same technique applies to an octal number with a fractional portion. Just take each digit and convert it to its equivalent 3-bit binary number. So for 2, we have 0, 1, 0. For three, zero, one, one. Now we have a binary point here, and we have five, which is zero, one, zero, one, and seven, which is one, one, one. So that's the equivalent binary number to octal. And if we want to go back to octal, you just do the same thing. You take groups of three and convert them back to their octal equivalent. So again, this group of three, we've got two, three, point, five, seven. If we wanted to convert this binary number to octal, again, we take groups of three with respect to the binary point so we have one, two, three. This is seven. And here we have to add two zeros. So this is four. And then going in this direction, this is three. And here we have seven. So this is the equivalent octal number here is 73. Point seventy four. So one of the main advantages of the octal number system is it's useful whenever a large number of binary bits of information are being written, displayed, or transferred from person to person, whether verbally or in writing, or displayed in some form. It makes it just easier to comprehend instead of the binary information. It's more compact, less prone to error.
and an even better way to represent binary information to make it more manageable is by converting it into the hexadecimal system. So let's take a look at the hexadecimal system. Now the hexadecimal system is a base 16. So we have 16 symbols or digits. We have 0 through 9 and then the letters A, B, C, D, E, and F is the equivalent decimal so it's the same up until 9 but then we have A is equivalent to 10 in decimal, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, F is 15. Because we're counting up to 15, uh, binary equivalent requires 4 bits. So F would be 1111 in binary. Now the great thing about binary to hexadecimal conversion is now we just group the binary number in groups of 4 bits. So we have 4 bits here, 4 bits here, and then we convert these groups individually into the corresponding hexadecimal number. So this number here is 0110 which is 6. This here is 10, but in hexadecimal that is A. And this here is 3, equivalent in hexadecimal. So this binary number 00111010110 zero, zero, one, 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 zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, is equivalent to 3A6 base of 16 in hexadecimal. And to convert from hexadecimal to binary, you just take each individual digit and convert it to its equivalent binary, its equivalent 4-bit binary number. So 2 is 0, 0, 1, 0. F is 1, 1, 1, 1 and 9 is 1001 zero, zero, one. and that's the equivalent binary number so what would you rather deal with this binary number or this hexadecimal number I think you're more prone to errors having to keep track of a number like this having to enter in ones and zeros as opposed to entering in this hexadecimal equivalent. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope this explained the usefulness of the octal and hexadecimal number system. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and comment. And thanks for watching. Do zero 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 zero.